This is Bounty, the Atari 8-bit podcast. I'm Kevin Savitz, and this is an interview episode of Antic, the Atari 8-bit podcast. Thomas Newton published two programs with Atari Program Exchange, Keypad Controller, software for reading the keypad game controllers from BASIC, and BASIC XA, a set of add-ons for Atari BASIC programmers. This interview occurred December 11th, 2015. Uh, can we start by you telling me uh, you know, how you first got involved with Atari computers and how you learned to program and kind of tell me the story? Okay. Well, I think it, it, it was, hmm, uh, I know that, that probably before I got involved with Atari, uh, that the, 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 uh, it took notice of the first two that came out, the pre-assembled ones, which were the TRS-80s and the Apple IIs, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and, then there, and then there were various others, uh, and had uh, worked some... It is back then I was a teenager and had had worked for a local business writing a program for them and then the Atari's came along and the the Apple IIs were fairly expensive by the standards of a teenager but the Atari's were more affordable and they also had that extra bit with the the graphics. I think it was a, you would call it player missile graphics, mm-hmm. but it, there, there was an, I remember some article describing Star Raiders and, and going on about uh, the, the, how the, the graphics were different on the machine. And that, that sort of interested me, and so I took some of the, the money that I had earned and bought one of those. And at some point, uh, it got the assembler editor cartridge and the documentation for it, and uh, then wrote uh, first one and then the other of those ATX programs. Nice. So, uh, what? So you wrote uh, keypad controller, um, which I think was the first one that you published through APX. What? Yeah. What? Uh, why did you write it? Was it a tool that you needed? Uh, did you have keypads sitting around from some other game that you wanted to? I mean, how did it? How did I it think it was just uh, I wrote it because I could. I saw these. That I saw these keypads and, and uh, that that they had available as game controllers, and kind of wondered why they couldn't be used uh, as uh, numeric keypads, on, like on a regular keyboard. And it, and it was just a matter of the, that uh, I could uh, write the code to make it work, and so I did. And I thought, well, maybe someone could use this. Okay. Now, this was the uh, the game keypads, not like the accountant type number keypad, right? Uh, these, these were these were the, the, the game keypads. So it, it, it was the 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 the, the thing where I think the numbers or whatever are probably in the right place, but it was these little nubby things you press on. It wasn't full. Right. Code. Yeah, I remember that. Did um, did you ever write any games or programs that use them, or just the controlling software for it? No, no games. Just 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 that utility software. Can you tell me? Do you remember anything about the process of submitting to APX and and uh, what happened there? Can't remember much about the the process. I mean, because it was uh, pretty much outlined in those in the APX catalog. It was sort of like you send off uh, submissions to such and such address, and then you'd hear back from them or not. And so that that was pretty much it. Okay. And then later you did uh, Basic XA, which was the the add-ons for for Atari Basic. Um, yes. Were you uh, were the again were these tools that that you needed because you were a Basic programmer? How did that come about? Uh, that came about because the, uh, I knew there there were things like we number packages and other things that that were for other Basics that that were considered to be useful. 
And what happened is an article came out describing the inner data structures of Atari Basic. And so normally this uh, this would be what you consider off limits. I mean, in, in a, uh, I guess in terms of a modern uh, programming language, you, you say that it's an opaque part, it's private data or an opaque part of the structure. So something you shouldn't use. Okay, but then you see this article came out that described uh, all, all the way down uh, how Atari Basic uh, was organized inside, what the, what the data actually meant. And so w with that information from that article, it was uh, a fair, fairly straightforward matter to say, oh, yeah, and now that this is documented, you can go and, and uh, change the line numbering, whatever, uh, do, do these things, and do it in a safe way instead of, oh, yeah, we just found out how to do it, but they had no idea if it's going to change <laughs> or if, or if it, the, the guess at how it works is wrong. Right. I mean, I, I know there, there, people have different ways of, of doing things. There's some people who like to, to hack at the edges of the unknown. And, oh, yeah, I well, found out something that, that, that that's not documented or whatever. Let's use it and, and, and see what you can get away with. And then there are other people who take a, a, a more of a... A, more of a cautious or more of an engineering approach. It's like, yeah, let's see what's documented and work, and work to what, as to what's documented and what's not going to break. And <laughs> attended to to the what's not going to break uh, approach. Right. Awesome. So, uh, did you make decent money from APX by releasing this stuff? Do you remember what your sales numbers? Were? A little bit of money. And uh, also uh, the, the the prizes from uh, from those things uh, expanded the uh, computer system. That uh, originally I had uh, like the uh, the Atari 800, and if you remember back then, uh, what most people had for data storage was a modified uh, tape drive, mm -hmm. like a, a compact cassette drive. So that's what that's what I had when I started, and one of the things that I got out of the the prizes was uh, two floppy disk drives, which of course back then were a, a real nice thing to have. And I mean now, <laughs> it's like well, <laughs> but uh, but then it was it was a very welcome improvement over the the tape recorder. Right. So. Did they just basically uh, give you, send you a catalog and say, pick out what you want? You have a budget of a thousand dollars. Yeah, whatever I it think it, I think that was the way it worked. That they said that you had such and such of of uh, play money or whatever, and and in here and in here buy buy whatever items at list price. You know? Nice. So you were you were a teenager at the time, is that right? Yes. So what did your parents? What did your parents think? Uh, I think they, I think they were were uh, they approved except of the I'm not sure that they approved of the uh, initial purchase of the Atari. I think maybe they they were thinking that the money should go towards college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they that's what parents do. <laughs> nice. So, um, did you have any other Atari projects that that you never published or uh, you know? Th Things that you wrote on the side that you never sent to APX or anything else? Uh, no, none that I sent to, to APX. Now, I remember after I went to, to graduate school that I tried for a while taking, uh, and this was a terminal emulator published by someone else, I think through APX, and I was trying to modify that thing and, and get it to work as, a, as an 80 column emulator and for the, the, some of the, the types of, of terminals they had there. And, that was uh, uh, not too successful, but I mean, it, it, it kind of, uh, it kind of got this, this, this sort of work. But that was that was only for myself. That was never uh, a published project. Cool. What do you do today? Oh, uh, right now it, it, it was the, well, between the jobs at the moment, but I'm a software engineer. I've been working on uh, mostly system type software, networking stuff. I mean, the most recent uh, uh, jobs have all been at uh, companies doing uh, building computer networking hardware. Nice. And where do you live? 
Uh, right now in Massachusetts, uh, in Marlboro, but uh, in, in the middle of moving to North Carolina to be closer to family. Nice. Awesome. Well, uh, I th unless you have anything else, I th think I have what I need, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If you enjoyed these interviews and would like to contribute something, I encourage you instead to donate to one of our favorite organizations, the Internet Archive, at archive.org. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library with the stated mission of universal access to all knowledge. They've done incredible things to preserve computer history, including hosting thousands of programs in an in-browser Atari emulator, creating the Wayback Machine, and offering full-page scans of countless Atari computer books and magazines. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org donate.